Hi traders, this is Chris from Elite Currency with another video on the Fibonacci series. This time we're going to take a look at how to trade using a very fixed method and non-discretionary method, which means that it's very rules based how the Fibonacci tool is placed. First of all, though, be aware that trading for exchange and other financial markets are considered high risk and may not be suitable for all traders and investors. Therefore, please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor. Please realize that by continuing watching this webinar, you agree with that disclaimer, and this video is intended for educational and informational purposes only. Personally, I'm a big fan of the Fibonacci tool, as you probably have realized, but a lot of traders do have troubles with it because they feel insecure about where to place the tool on the graph, and that does lead to mistakes. Uh, for instance, to having too many fibs on a choppy price action. Uh, placing, for instance, the fib too many times around this area would not be good. Also, uh, doing it too many times in different directions and stuff like that doesn't tend to help the equity curve. So what I like to see is a clear momentum, first of all, into, uh, into the trend preferably, but it could be either against the trend as well. And in any case, I want to wait for that momentum and place the FIB on that top to bottom or from bottom to top, in this case, in an upside. So this is a bullish momentum right here where I have the cursor and I'll draw that with a green line and I place the FIB from there to there. So I'm waiting for the target to get hit without the bottom to be broken. If the bottom breaks, this swing high is not valid anymore, right? This swing low is swing high. So if price doesn't break this bottom in a bullish swing, the top in a bearish swing, and then reaches the minus 61.8 target, then I can start placing the new FIB which I've indicated with the orange circles here, the peach color circles. Only then do I move the fib. That's to avoid all the multiple fibs, all the different ways of placing of fibs and getting too confused. Only one fib on one swing, wait for the target to get hit and then move the target or to move the fib, I should say. So I will do that right now. I got a new swing high, swing low. What I do then is I use the very bottom right here of the move of the new swing, which is this green circle here, or this, this peach color to there. So I move the bottom from there to there and the top from there to there. And that is the new swing. Now, the great thing, it's very discretionary and you know, I, there's no ifs or buts. It's very clear when and when to move it and when not to move it. So there are two ways of doing it. One could move it to the natural top here or literally to the target. I personally use the natural top. And, uh, you know, if it's target, it would be here. In this case, there's little difference. Sometimes there's a bigger difference. Personally, I just use the natural top right there. Now, of course, there's the potential to do the same thing. If this bottom doesn't get broken and the target gets hit, then I can move the fib again. Now, of course, this is a great uh, potential for trading as well, obviously at the 50 fib or the 61.8. But in any case, the swing high, swing low and where the fib should be placed is clear. Now, with an entry at the 50 fib, as we already discussed, or the 61.8 for that matter, you can see the price bounces again on this pound odd 50-minute uh, chart, by the way, and uh, uses that, those fibs, and an entry at these levels would be up already a very big amount, ranging about 150 pips. Now, if one is patient enough and waits for the minus 61.8 target, it even amounts to 200 plus pips in profit. So before, of course, the next FIB can be placed, I need that minus 61.8 target to be hit. This does not count the swing high here because the target has not been hit yet and eventually tops out way above it. And then the purple circles here or magenta circles indicating the new FIB that I can use or the new swing. So I place the FIB from here to here and I am looking for price again to retrace. As you can see, it kind of dashes the 38.2 FIB and uses it for a move up to the minus 272 target. Now, the cool thing about this is you can see that if price, if a trader would have used this bottom right in here for the next swing, then that would be a loss. And that is a premature loss because of the fact that only the minus 272 target got hit, not the minus 61.8. I would never put this FIB on because the target didn't get hit. So in that regard, I'm safeguarded. Let me zoom up here to the hourly chart so you can see that a bit better. All right. And you can see that I kept, I kept this FIB because only the minus 272 target got hit and not the minus 61.8 target. And that actually saves me from a loss because price retraces to the 61.8 of the same FIB 
where the 38.2 is respected and makes a bounce almost to the target. So a great way and you know, a couple of good fibs in a row and the third one actually showing how good this particular rule is, is in filtering out the setups, the bad setups as well. Next week, we're going to take a look at swing highs and swing lows, even more so using discretionary methods like the awesome oscillator. And I look forward to that. We're going to talk about invalidation levels probably two weeks from now. Write an email to us or send us a tweet or take a look at Facebook and get a free ebook on Fibonacci. Hope to see you soon. I wish you good trading. Cheers.